What's up everyone? I hope you all are doing well and that you had a great start to your 2022. I'm back with another video and today is going to be the beginning of a new series of videos that I'm doing on YouTube and it's going to be dealing with tuning drums. I don't know how many times I've been asked, how do you tune your drums? Is the bottom head tighter than the top? When are you going to do a tuning video? Well guys, today is the beginning of the tuning videos. Today is the day. So I've decided to split this series up into three different videos. Today I'm going to be going through my process of how I tune my toms. The second video is going to be how I tune my kick drum. And the third video is going to be how I tune my snares. That's the one I'm really looking forward to because it's going to be very special. So the tones that I'll be tuning to will be my standard tones that I tune to in most situations. However, in some situations I may tune higher or lower but it depends. In any situation though, the process never changes. It remains the same. So before we get into the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you dig this t-shirt, be sure to hit the link in the description and go check out Got Pocket Apparel. It's some dope stuff over there for musicians, especially drummers and bassists. All right, guys, let's get to work. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna remove the old drum heads. Um, I'm going to leave the same resonant head on, but I am going to take it off for now and just so I can clean the dust off and the uh, debris from the drum and from the rim. I'll be using Clear Ambassadors by Remo for the resonant head and I'll be using Clear Vintage Emperors for the batter side. I'm going to sit this to the side for now. And then I'm going to take a cloth and wipe the rim, clean any dust or debris off of it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the drum, the bearing edge. And also I'm gonna feel for any splinters or anything like that around the drum, just make sure it's still smooth. Once I do that, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side of the drum, the batter side. Once the drum is clean, now I'm going to put the heads back on and the rims. And also, if you're using the same rezzo head, then it's, it's best to go ahead and just wipe that off and clean that off from any debris as well. And I like to line my logo up with the top of the drum. So now I'm going to finger tighten the screws. Now if you have a mounting system on your drum, then it may be kind of difficult to uh, finger tighten those screws so you may just have to use your drum key just to you know 
tighten the screw a little bit. You don't want to put any tension on it. You just want to tighten it just enough to where it's not wiggly and loose. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Put the head on and the rim and finger tighten the screws. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the resonant head and then I'm going to seat it. Basically put pressure in the center of the drum head with both of my palms. All right, so I cranked the drum and now I'm going to seat the head. Now, if you're using Remo heads, as you begin to seat the drum head, you may hear some cracking. And all that is, is the collar forming around the shell's bearing edge. Now I'm going to loosen the resonant head as if I were to finger tighten it, and then I'm going to start tuning it. So I use the star pattern when I tune and I usually complete the cycle twice before I begin to make sure that each lug is in tune with each other. The purpose for making sure that each lug is in tune with each other is to make sure that the head is seated evenly on the drum and also to prevent unwanted overtones. You'll still have some overtones, but the overtones will be in tune with each other. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you mute the opposite head so that you can hear the tone of the head that you're tuning only. So I'm going to put my hand under the drum to mute the batter head. So I'll go around and tap near each lug. And for example, if four out of the six lugs have the same pitch, then I'll make sure the other two are tuned to the same pitch as well. Once I get the lugs in tune with each other on the resonant side, I'll flip the drum over and crank the batter head. I'm not going to tune it just yet, I'm just going to seat it.
After I seat the batter head, I'm going to set it to the side. I'm not going to detune it. I'm going to leave it tight for now. Now we're going to move to the 10 inch rack tom. I've already replaced the heads and cleaned the drum. So now we're just going to do the same exact thing to the 10 inch tom that we did to the 12. We're going to start by cranking the resonant head, seating it on the drum and detuning it to around finger tighten tension. Now I'm going to tune and make sure that all of the lugs are in tune with each other. And remember to put your hand under the drum to mute the opposite head. Time to crank the batter head and seat it on the drum. Now we're moving to the eight inch rack tom. Same exact process, nothing different. We're gonna crank the resonant head seat it and detune it. Now it's time to tune and make sure that all of the lugs are in relative pitch with each other. The rezzo head is in tune. Time to crank this batter head and seat it on the drum. Last but not least, moving on to the big boy, 16 inch floor tom. Same process, we're gonna crank the resonant head, seat it on the drum, and detune to finger tighten tension.
time to start tuning. Now, if you notice, I'm not holding the floor tom in my lap like I did the rack toms. I'm actually using my drum stool to mute the batter head. So you can use this same method for the rack toms if you choose, as long as the bottom head or the opposite head is muted while you're tuning the other. Alright, time to crank the batter side and seat the head on the drum. I'm pretty sure you guys got this part down by now. You know, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's all about repetition. Now I'm going to rack the rack toms, put the floor tom on legs, and tune the batter heads. Personally, I like to rack the toms and put them in place before I start to tune the batter heads. The reason is because I want to make sure they sound great together when I'm tuning and not just as individual toms. So as you can hear right now, they sound pretty horrible because they're still cranked. So what I'm going to do now is detune the batter heads and start tuning them. So my approach for tuning the batter head is slightly different than the rezzo head. I tune the batter head until it feels good and sound good. So you'll see as I'm tuning, I'm playing the drum as I'm turning each lug. Still using the same pattern, but I'm playing at the same time. Preferably, I always start by tuning the 12 inch tom first. The relationship between my 12 inch rack tom and my 10 inch rack tom is the here comes the bride melody. Doom, doom, da doom. No matter how high or how low I have my tones. That relationship usually never changes for me unless I'm asked to have certain tones for a specific situation. So if we're looking at a major scale, my 12 inch tom will represent the one, 
my 10 inch tone will represent the four, and my eight inch tone will represent the six. If I have a 14 inch floor tom, usually it would be an octave of my 10 inch rack tom. But since I'm using my 16 inch floor tom only, I'm going to tune in an octave of my 12 inch rack tom. If while I'm tuning the batter head, I'm having issues with the tone, then I'll mute the resonant head and make sure that each lug is in tune with each other. Then if I'm still not getting the tone that I'm looking for, I'll make adjustments to the resonant head. But it's very important that you continuously play while you're doing this, just so that you can hear what the adjustments are doing to the tone of the drum. Alright, we got the 12 sounding pretty good. Now we're going to move on to the 10. Now based on where I have the 12 inch tom tuned to, that's going to give me an idea of how high or how low I need to tune my 10. Based on that, here comes the bride melody. Doom, 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 doom.
All right, moving on to the eight. Based on where I have the 10, I know where I need to tune the eight. Doom, doom, doom. All right, we got the rack toms feeling good and sounding good. Now I'm gonna move on to the 16 inch floor tom. And remember, this is gonna to be tuned to an octave of my 12 inch rack tom. All right, they all feel good, they all sound good. Let's see what these sound like with the snare and the kick. So guys, listen, it's very important that you tune your drums to sound good raw first before you put any mics on them, before you put any muffling, 
before they go through processing and recording software, plugins, anything like that. You want them to sound good before anything. You want them to sound good natural. Um, if they sound good naturally with nothing on them, it's, when it's time to record, when it's time to play live, all the engineer is going to be doing is enhancing your natural tones. And that's what I want. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I want. I want my drums to sound good raw first with nothing on them. Um, it's very important to tune your drums to sound good. It's an extension of you. Uh, it's going to make you sound even better than you already do on your kit with your skill level. So definitely tune your drums. Also, I want to mention that the process that I use in this video is not considered the right way to tune. There is no such thing. There are many different ways to tune drums. This is just my process that I prefer. And this is how I get the tones that I look for in my drums. So I wanted that to be known. I hope you all found this video to be helpful. If you have any questions for me, be sure to comment below and I'll do my best to answer them quickly. Be sure to look out for video two, the kick drum tuning video and video three, I'm gonna be tuning my snares. All right, till next time guys, peace.